Accessing the Perfect Photo Suite as a standalone application is one of the best ways to utilize some of its best features. You can start out inside Perfect Browse, find the images that you're looking for, open them quickly into an application of your choice, and then drop them right back here inside Perfect Browse. On the left-hand side of your screen, you'll see the Sources pane. This is where you're going to access all of your different images from different sources. Right up at the top, we've got our online storage services like Dropbox, Google Drive, OneDrive, and you'll see that I have my iCloud Photo Stream selected. These are all images that I've taken with my phone and then edited with my phone, and I can actually open them from my Photo Stream into a program like Perfect Effects and play around with them. You'll also see network drives and external hard drives that I might have attached to my computer. Plus, you'll also see folders like my desktop, my pictures, and you'll even see the On One Samples or Extras folders. And those are good places to start out with fun images that you can play around with. Now I'm going to go over and I'm going to choose my Video Webinar External Hard Drive. In the center of my screen, you're going to see all of the folders that are nested in that drive. And I'll double click on my Photos folder. Then I want to open up my Cabin Weekend folder. We'll double click it. And then you'll see all of the automatically updated previews of the raw files that are inside. On the bottom left hand corner of the screen, there's a small slider. This gives you the ability to change the thumbnail size of these images, and most of the time I like to make them a little bit bigger by moving that slider over to the right. Now I can scroll through and I can access and take a look at my images with a much larger view. When you find a photo that you'd like to work on, just double click. It will zoom in so that you can take an even larger preview of the photo itself. And then when you're ready to edit that image, go up in the top right hand corner and just click on the application of your choice. I'm going to go ahead and take this into Perfect Enhance. It'll then ask you whether you'd like to edit a copy or the original of your file. If you're working on raw files like I am today, it will automatically choose to edit a copy because we don't want to destroy your original raw file. Then down at the bottom are your copy options. These are really important. This is kind of like a preemptive way of saving your copied file. So I want my image to be a Photoshop file because I want to support a layered based workflow. I can also go in and change the color space, the bit depth, and the resolution. And when I'm done and I exit from Perfect Enhance, it will pull the information from this copy options dialog and save my photo out. So I'll go ahead and click OK. Now here, inside Perfect Enhance, on the right hand side of the screen, I have my color and tone adjustments. These are all different ways for me to adjust the areas of my image. I like to go through and play around with each one of these sliders. For this photo, I want to make sure that I adjust my shadow and my highlights because my shadows are a little dark and some of my highlights are a little too bright. So I'll take both of these sliders and move them over to the right to brighten or darken certain parts of my photo. I'm also going to go through and play around with my brightness slider to make my image either lighter or darker. And then down at the bottom will be your detail slider. This is one of my favorites. It adds edge contrast or local contrast to the smaller details in your photo to make it appear a little bit crisper. I'll take the detail slider and move that over to the right and you'll see it really intensifies all those little tiny edges in the trees and the grass that you see in the foreground. Down below will be your color section. This gives you the ability to adjust the temperature and the tint of your image. I'm going to click the auto button so that it will auto adjust my color. You'll see that it's warmed the image up quite a bit, but I can still manually change this if I want to. I also have a vibrant slider, which I'll push over to the right to intensify the colors in the image. I won't go all the way to 100, but I want to get pretty far. Then to finish my photo off, I'm going to add a subtle vignette in the vignette pane just by clicking the preset at the top of my screen. And then I'll go down to the sharpening pane and I'll click screen. I want to sharpen my image for the screen to prep it to go online. So I'll click that. It'll add a very small amount of sharpening and then I'm done. 
On the bottom right hand corner, there's a save and close button. And when I press this, it's going to save my image using the copy options that we chose at the beginning of this video. It's going to apply the changes from here inside Enhance, and then it's going to bring me immediately back into Perfect Browse. Back here in Browse, you'll see that we're taking a look at our after image. If I press the G key on my keyboard, it will zoom back out and I can see that my original file and my after image are side by side. So we can take a look at the photo that we started out with, a raw file right off the camera, and the photo that we very quickly edited inside Perfect Enhance. As you can see, it's very easy to go back and forth between browse and any application of your choice to save your photos out.